Now I want to go into the commit and rollback commands in a little bit of detail. First of all, I'm going to compare them with each other. Then I'm going to go even further with it and describe exactly what the commit and rollback commands do. This is a little bit of database administration, a little bit of tuning, but it's really important to understand these two concepts, even at this stage. First of all, commit is faster. It needs to be because it's executed a lot more often. Hopefully. Yeah, definitely hopefully, because if you're doing a lot of rollbacks, it means there's too many changes going on that really shouldn't be going on in your database. It, it is assumed that the most of the activity in terms of transaction activity is going and committing the changes to your database. If you're doing a lot of rollback, if you're waiting for transactions to complete from other transactions, you could have a lot of locking issues and you could really have very poor performance as a result. Rollback is much slower. It does much more work than the commit command does. Therefore, it is hopefully infrequent in relation to execution of commit commands. Now let's take a good look at what actually happens to an Oracle installation when data is changed by SQL DML statements in a transaction. Let's say you execute either one or a number of DML SQL commands which make changes to the database. Before a commit or rollback command are executed, the database is actually changed. The logs or redo logs are written and the rollback is written to. When you execute a commit command, the rollback is deleted and nothing else is done. When you execute a rollback command, the rollback will be applied to the database, it will be recorded in the redo logs, and the rollback is deleted. You can see what I mean by commit being preferable to rollback, since it is much faster, because commit involves a single process, and rollback involves three separate processes, including the process that is done when commit is executed. Now we can see the same process graphically. In this case, I've executed some SQL commands and no commit or rollback has been applied. What has actually happened is the changes have been written to the database, the changes have been recorded in the redo logs, and rollback has been built to enable future potential undo of the database changes. When I execute a commit command, that is, a commit command is applied, all that happens is that the rollback recording is deleted. On commit, the database changes and the redo logs remain as they are because both have already been altered. In the case of rollback, rollback performs the most amount of activity compared with commit and actually executing the SQL commands. Firstly, rollback will be applied to the database to undo the changes that have already been made. Since the changes were made to the database, even though the commit command was not executed. Additionally, rollback will actually write the undo changes to the redo logs. So the redo logs, without having the commit command executed and having the rollback command executed, will now contain a record of both the initial data changes by the SQL command plus the undo changes from the rollback command. It should be plain to see just by looking at the on commit diagram and the rollback diagram that there is a lot less activity when using the commit command. It is quite important to understand these differences between these two commands so that you can program SQL code accordingly.